Hi friends, I'm here today to show you how to collect data for our first mini activity where you're going to be determining the density of some salt water. We're going to go over how to take the measurements correctly and then the second part of the video will go over how to graph and analyze the results correctly. The materials that you'll be using for this experiment will be a burette clamp, a 50 milliliter burette, a sample of salt water, this one is 8% salt water, a ring stand, a beam balance, and from your drawer, a small beaker. The first step is going to be to take the mass of this beaker. When you're using a beam balance, you want to first make sure that it is properly calibrated, that it zeroes out. So you push all of the sliders to zero and you look to see if the two lines match up. If not, you adjust it here. Next, you put your beaker on the balance and you start with the largest slider and you move it. That means it's too heavy. And then you adjust the next one, starting heavy and moving until it's too light. For the sliders with grooves, make sure that they are in the groove. Now to read this correctly, the mass of this beaker is 44.6 and then each of these marks is worth 1 one hundredth of a gram. So 0 0.61, 0 0.62, 0 0.63. And then we estimate where between the 0 0.63 and the 0.64 it is. So I'm going to estimate that it's going to be one-tenth of the way along, and so the final mass that I would report for this is 44.631 grams. Next, we're going to set up our burette. Make sure before you pour anything into the burette that this Inline means open. Make sure that it is closed. When you fill up your burette, you can choose to use a funnel or not, but I'm going to fill it by unclamping it and tilting it into the sink. Now normally, at this point, I would dump the burette out into the sink and then refill it again. That's called conditioning. And what it does is it makes sure that any drops that were in here before that might have been just pure water are now going to be not affecting when I put my solution in. But because of the nature of our activity today, it's going to be fine to not condition them. Now you notice that the zero mark is at the top of burettes or near the top of burettes, and I've filled it past the zero mark. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a separate beaker, not one that I've weighed, but a waste beaker, and I'm going to slowly open up the valve at the bottom to make it so that the water level is going to be exactly at the zero mark. And now you can see that the very bottom of the meniscus is exactly on the zero milliliter mark. Now you're going to perform at least five trials, but you can do more, where you're going to write down where the water starts in the burette. You're going to let some out into this weighed beaker, and you're going to stop, 
close this, and you're going to read where the water level ends on the burette. And knowing the difference between those two is going to let you calculate how much water you've let into the beaker. And then for each trial, you will then take the mass of that sample. You'll pour it out and dry out your beaker and start again, writing where you left off and where you end so that you can figure out how many milliliters were then put in for that trial and then take its mass. It's arbitrary, the numbers that you choose. You want to choose a wide range though so that your graph is going to be more legitimate. So in this first trial, I started at the zero mark, and this is where I ended. And I'm calling the very bottom of the meniscus that it's 3.1, and I thought it looked right in between the two lines, and so I'm going to estimate that it's right in between as a 5, because each of the smallest marks is worth a tenth of a milliliter. So I'm going to report the final volume on this. 3.15 milliliters. The next step is going to be to weigh this beaker with the salt water in it. Now you can see the mass is 47.9. That's not quite to the 0.91, so I'm going to estimate that it's maybe two tenths of the way there. So I'm going to say it's 47.902. So these are my data for trial one. I'm going to perform four extra trials. Now make sure that between trials, you pour out the salt water that was there. You can rinse this out if you choose to, but it, I don't think it will be necessary. But make sure that it is thoroughly dry. All right, so I've got all of my data collected. Now it's really just time to clean up and then analyze the results through a graph. So now we're going to be using Logger Pro to analyze the data. I'm gonna go back to the handout for the lab so you can see step by step what it says and then I'll do that on Logger Pro. Oh, uh, sorry, let me just switch tabs. There we go. So measure the mass of an empty beaker and put it here. Mine was 44.631 grams. Next, I'm going to input my data into Logger Pro. I performed five trials, and there were three pieces of data recorded for each trial. So in addition to the X and Y provided, I'm going to need to add another manual column. You do that by going to Data at the top and New Manual Column. I'll name it later, 
A manual column means that you're going to be typing in numerical data and not a calculated column, which we'll look at later, where it's going to calculate values for you. I'm going to make this column the initial level of water. You can see here, I've changed the second column to be the final volume of water for each trial, short name final and the units milliliters, lowercase m, capital L. And for the column that I had created earlier, that's the mass of the water and the beaker together, making sure that the short name indicates that it's the water and beaker together and the units are grams. Next, it says to create calculated column that will be mass of water sample, another that will be volume of water sample. That is under data, new calculated column, the expression is where you're going to type in the thing that you want it to calculate. The variables are telling you which of these columns here it will be using to calculate. And so you would pick the variable. So for mass of water sample, it's going to be the mass of water and beaker. You don't want to try to type this because it needs to be exact. So you would select it from columns. Now I'm going to subtract from it the empty beaker, which I typed in earlier was 44.631 grams. And that is here. I'm going to double check that that will work by putting in my first mass. I'm going to do my other calculated column. And the expression for this is that it's going to be the final volume that was on the burette minus the initial volume. And those are two columns. Now I'm going to fill out my data and you'll see that the calculated columns will calculate automatically. Then we'll worry about formatting the graph. Right now it's gonna graph initial level of water to final volume of water. And so it's gonna be a nonsensical graph, but we'll format it later to graph the things that we want it to. Notice that this went just to zero when I said 0, 0.00. So that means we need to format it in options, and I want it to be to two decimal places because that was the level of precision granted by the measuring tool. I'm also going to format this one in the same way. You can see that it did calculate the volume. We need to format this because our answers here cannot be any more precise than the measurements that went into them. And so they should only have two decimal places as well. Now I've got to also format this one. The balance gave us three decimal places. And that's what this is for the default. Now that I've got all my values, I can format the graph. And that's by right clicking and going to graph options. Right now, I'm just going to make it so that the correct things are graphing. And so I just selected the tab here, axes option. The y axis, I want to be mass of the water sample and not initial volume of water. The x-axis down here is the volume of the water sample. Let's take a look at what that looks like. A nice straight line. And now we can worry about all the other formatting that goes into this. Name the data set. The title. 
that expresses what the variables are being graphed. Let's go back and check how we're doing on the steps. A linear regression is here up at the R equals, it's a linear fit. My correlation is 1.000, which means that I did a great job measuring. It's a perfect correlation. This is exactly a straight line. The slope is 1.052, and it tells me, because I put in the units before, that it's grams per milliliter. This is the format that it's giving me this equation in, where y equals mx plus b, where m, the slope, is this, and b, the y-intercept, is this. You can move this around if it shows up in a place that's blocking things. But I'm now going to paste this graph in if you click on it so that the boxes appear around it and then hold Control and C to copy it. Then you can paste your graph by holding Control and V. Getting the data table into a document is a little bit trickier than when you put the graph in. In this case, you're going to want to print screen and then paste that into the document and then crop it to fit. To print screen is function and then at the top, F11 has print screen for me. And now when I go here and I hit control V to paste that screenshot and I can crop this image And there we go. It says to write the equation for the line of best fit that Logger Pro calculated. We got some numbers for this in the graph. M would be 1.052. B is negative 0.05795. we know that based on the graph, the X value really was the volume of the water in milliliters, and that the Y was the mass. The density of the water sample, because slope is calculated by having the rise over the run, in this case, it was calculating the mass divided by the volume, which is what density is, and so the slope is the density, 1.052. The units, because it was grams, the mass, divided by milliliters, the volume, the units are grams per milliliter. Now we're going to use this equation that we got here to answer these last two questions. I'm gonna copy our equation as what would be the mass of 4.5 milliliters of salt water. And so we can take milliliters of salt water and plug in 4.5. And now the mass, we can calculate it 1.052 times 4.5 minus 0 0.05795. To solve for this last question, instead of subbing in the 4.5 milliliters for milliliters of water, we would sub in the 250 grams for the mass of water. From there, it becomes an algebraic situation where you would add this amount to both sides to move it to the other side. And then you would divide by 1.052 and you would have a volume in milliliters of water. I hope this has helped you work through this and understand how to do these steps and how to analyze data, how to use Logger Pro a little bit better, and how to get things into a nice format so that you can submit it electronically.